Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today I'm going to be showing you how to propagate Chinese elm from cuttings but more than that I'm going to be showing you the progression of a cutting two years later after it has rooted where you can then take it and transform it into a bonsai. Alright, so welcome to the video. This little tree here is a Chinese elm and I would say it's probably, if not, one of the most popular species for bonsai, especially for beginners. Any sort of big box store that you go to and you go to the indoor plant section or indoor trees and you find a little bonsai sitting in the pot, they will most likely be either ficus or Chinese elm this one and they are relatively easy to care for I would just say if you do have it and you're keeping yours indoors during the summer and growing seasons bring it outside to get some real sunlight this particular tree I'm actually doing an air layering at the base and this is because I didn't quite like how the tree looked before it sort of had two legs at the bottom and then at the bottom of the tree last year before I cut this branch off there was sort of like a makeshift branch wherever I purchased it from they sort of cheated in creating a branch in a place to make the overall shape look good. But to me personally, that didn't look good. So I'm air layering this tree here to make it a little bit smaller. But today we're taking cuttings. And if you're new to bonsai and horticulture, taking a cutting essentially is cutting a branch off of a tree, sticking it into soil. And then sometime later, that cutting roots and it becomes a new tree. Every bonsai artist or propagator will have their own tricks and methods of rooting trees from cuttings. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you my methods that I use. And even if you are a complete beginner to bonsai and you have a Chinese elm, Chinese elm are one of the easiest species to root from cuttings. They almost root themselves. So you should be able to follow along, no problem. And now before we begin, the tools that I will be using in this video today are some twig cutters, branch cutters, wire cutters, a chopstick, and some gin pliers. And as always, if you're new to bonsai, you don't need all of these tools. You can get by with just a cheap pair of garden scissors or even some garden secateurs. When I got started, I just used a cheap pair of garden snippers. Of course, the specialized tools do help a lot in doing certain cuts, but these are the ones that I used whenever I got started. You just want to make sure that whatever tool that you do use is clean and sharp. Clean because we don't want to introduce any bacterial or fungal infections to our trees. And in horticulture, clean cuts heal so much faster and more efficiently than a dull cut that was like squashed by a dull pair of scissors. When it comes to the optimal time of year to take cuttings from Chinese elm, personally, I have found they root quite well from early spring to late summer. But the absolute most optimal time would be late spring, just as the tree begins to push out new leaves on the ends. And whenever we take a cutting from a Chinese elm, there's two types of cuttings that we can take. We can take either a nodal cutting or a heel cutting. So the place on the branch in which we cut is important when it comes to successful rooting. So what I like to do is cut just below a leaf. This is what's known as a nodal cutting. Each one of these leaves here along here are known as nodes. So if you wanted a smaller cutting, you could cut under this leaf. There's many different nodes. If for example, you've got a long branch like this and you want to make a cutting from this, you don't always have to cut below a leaf on the tree. If you look along the branch, you will see some dormant buds of leaves further in. These are also nodes in which you can cut back to. So if I come right back here, you can see along the branch, the little dormant buds here and here. So if I want this branch to root at this point that I have marked, as you can see, it's just below this bud. So I'm going to cut that here. And then when it comes to taking a heel cutting, this is a branch off of another Chinese elm that I have. And as you can see, if I flip this over, there's one main branch that would be growing on the tree. And then on that branch, the tree sends out side branches. If you take one of these side branches and just pull down, it creates a little tear at the bottom of the branch. And this is what's known as the heel. We could do the same with this branch. We just pull down, take off the bottom leaf. And then I just like to clean up the end with some scissors by cutting off the tear. Thank you. 
When it comes to the substrate that we use for taking cuttings, I have found many different bonsai artists have their own preferred mixture. With Chinese elm, it will root in the majority of substrates that you put it into. You could use pure Akadama, you could use Akadama pumice lava rock mixture, or in my case, what I'm using today is just a simple mix of Ericaceous compost and perlite. The compost is for water retention and the perlite is for aeration. Depending on the species that I'm trying to root from cuttings, my substrate will vary. But the reason why I want to use this that holds so much water is because the cuttings don't have any roots. So I want them to be sitting in an environment that is constantly moist so that they're always able to keep taking up water, therefore enhance the production of roots in a shorter time frame. So to plant the cuttings, you don't need anything fancy. I'm just using this old plastic flower pot. I'm going to fill it up. You don't want to start compressing it like this because whenever you stick the cutting in, everything will be so compact. So what I like to do is just let everything be nice and light. And then with this flower pot, I'm just going to give it a water so that the water penetrates the whole way through the pot. And now just to make sure that all of the soil is wet, I'm taking a chopstick, sticking some holes into the soil. See how here there's dry stuff coming out? That's just some areas in which water hasn't reached because the first watering with some compost is somewhat hydrophobic. It repels the water and it can be a little bit tricky. So you could even give it a stir just to make sure it's all homogenized. And now as a general rule, when we take cuttings, you want the cutting to be planted half the depth of the cutting. So if I were planting this one, I would want it this deep in the soil. So that's why we would strip off the lower leaves. I find it's a lot nicer to cut the lower leaves than just pull them all off at once. Because if you pull them, you can sometimes tear the bark right off the cutting and then it becomes less successful. So just cut off the lower leaves. This looks pretty good to me. Now, as it is right now, you could take this, put it into soil and it would most likely root. But what I like to do just to increase the chances even more is to use some rooting powder. You can use any rooting powder that you like. The majority of them will work, but I have found the best kind to use is one with the active ingredient IBA, and that stands for indol 3 butyric acid. I found that the rooting powders in garden centers tend to not have IBA in them. They're marketed as sort of a natural rooting powder, and what they do is simply prevent the cutting from rotting as they're antifungal. You see, whenever you take a cutting from a tree, all of the growth hormones and auxins that's stored in the leaves begin to travel from the top of the cutting and make their way down through the cutting cell by cell right until it reaches the base. And whenever enough of these auxins accumulate at the bottom, the cells at the bottom actually reprogram themselves and transform from branch cells that creates branches like this into root cells and then the cutting will actually send out roots. And sometimes cuttings don't actually have enough auxin in the leaves and stem to send down to the base to create sufficient roots. And that's where a rooting hormone comes in. Whenever we actually stick this into the IBA, which is a synthetic form of auxin, it covers that whole area in that synthetic auxin. And then the cutting can actually get to work right away in transforming themselves to root cells. To get the powder to stick to the cutting, I'm just dipping it into some water. Then we just dip the cutting into the powder. And now from this point, you may think, oh, we just stick it into soil. That should be good to go. I wouldn't advocate for just sticking it straight in like this, pushing through all of the compost because look what happens. The powder's gone. So let's give that a quick wash. Instead, it's quite useful to make a little hole first with the chopstick and then we sit the cutting into it. Then we can just tighten it around like that. So I'm going to do this same procedure to the rest of these cuttings that I have over here. So again, I'm just removing the bottom leaves. I'm really making sure that I cover most of the stem here in this powder because you may also get roots from up here. Now these cuttings have been successfully planted. They're looking pretty well in this pot. All you have to do now is wait for roots. And then with that, one year later, and I believe they have now all rooted. If I just take this and pull it up, as you can see under here, this cutting has got plenty of roots and you have just successfully made a new bonsai from that. 
I'm going to put this back in and come back to it later in the video. Now, if you want the cuttings that you do take to thicken up rather quickly, I wouldn't advise putting them into a shallow tray like this with lots of cuttings in the one space because there really is limited space for the roots of these cuttings to grow into. I would advise putting them into a tray like this where each cutting has their own individual space to grow and then whenever they fill the space, up pot it into a slightly larger pot and they will thicken so much faster than being clumped together like this one. And now just as a demonstration as to how quickly Chinese elms can thicken from a cutting, I'm going to cut back to some footage from last year and it's of a cutting that I took one year before that. So this is two years ago the cutting was took just like how we did it here today. And then one year later, this is how it looked. I'm going to put this elm into a larger pot to encourage the trunk to thicken a lot more. Let's just see how the roots on this one are. Yes, they have filled the pot. I can see them all around the bottom here. And just before this begins to get pot bound, now is a great time to upsize the pot. I don't want to upsize too quickly, otherwise I may get root rot as there'll be too much moisture around the roots. I'm gonna gradually and incrementally up the pot size from this to this, and then eventually an even bigger one. So before we repot, I would just like to loosen up the roots with these little tweezers here. Get rid of the moss on the top. And the reason why I'm loosening the roots is I want to discourage and prevent the tree's roots from circling around and around. And by just loosening it up like this before we repot, it prevents that circling until of course it reaches the age of this pot. But hopefully by then we can upsize it again. And now back to one year later again, and this is the very same tree that we planted into this pot to thicken it up. This tree has doubled in thickness. And as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit out of control. The branches are, you know, getting pretty thick on it, really long, because really all I did with this tree was let it grow. So today I'm going to see if I can do something with this tree to set it up on its way to becoming a better bonsai. And with a piece of material like this, there is many options because there's so many different branches and things that you can do with it. You could wire the trunk, give it an S shape. Maybe if you wanted to turn this into two trees, you could air layer the top off of it and have a tree here and a tree here. But today I'm gonna to do something quite bold. I know because Chinese elms grow so quickly and vigorously, I'm gonna be quite fine to do this, but I'm going to do a trunk chop and cut it back to the lowest branch, this really small one here. That way we get really nice taper in the tree. So I'm going to cut this here and I'm leaving just these little leaves on it. Now I'm just going to clean up this cut a little. So it was quite a drastic cut that we did on this little tree, but because of how fast the Chinese elms grow, I know this little branch is gonna become quite thick and become a really good leader of the tree in another one or two years. So instead of the tree being the same thickness the whole way up, we will get a nice taper from this point. And I even think if I wanted to, I could cut this tree even further back because there is buds the whole way along the trunk of this tree and by cutting it back to one of them it would probably grow but just to be on the safe side at the moment I've kept some green on the top. Let's just cover this end in some cut putty. So I'm just taking the cut putty and putting it over the wound and by applying cut putty like this it will encourage the tree to heal over in this area so much quicker. This particular cut putty has a fungicide in it that prevents this area from rotting and it also has a hormone that encourages better callusing. Again because these Chinese elms grow so fast I would say this cut will disappear in maybe one or two years. And you may be thinking, what are you gonna do with that piece that you just cut off of that tree? Again, we can take many, many heel cuttings off of this tree. You just pull them off. All of these will make excellent bonsai in the future. By no means am I going to waste all that I just cut off of that tree. The main idea was just to grow something in order to get lots of cuttings from. So that is what I have got from it. And I'm also going to show you guys a little trick that I do in order to get a nice shape on a cutting before it even turns into a bonsai so that as it thickens and actually roots in the soil, you have almost an instant bonsai shape right from the get-go. So for example, say this is our heel cutting that we've just taken, and this is quite a long one. This is just a big box in which I keep a lot of scrap wire from unwiring trees or old projects. So for example, let's take this piece of scrap wire. This is just something to get you started. 
if you've got lots of cutting. So I'm just going to wire this cutting as it is, wrapping the wire up along the branch. And then once it's wired, all you have to do is just give it a little twist like this. When this roots and thickens over time, you already have that nice S curve and bonsai shape. I would just say though, after about six months, remove the wire because if this cutting has rooted for you, it will thicken pretty quickly and you don't want it to scar the trunk of your tree. So I would just say this is a little too tall. This would be the tree here and you even have a branch on the outside of a bend. And although Chinese elm love full sun, for cuttings of Chinese elm, I would recommend to go into partial sun instead, just indirect sunlight, because if they're in full sun all day long and they don't have any roots to provide sufficient moisture to the top of the tree, your little cuttings could dry out on you. So if you place them in a shaded spot, it'll do them really well. So that is all of the cuttings planted into this big flower pot. Hopefully all of these root. It is worth mentioning that Chinese elms are a little bit susceptible to spider mite and scale insects. So if you do see these on your cuttings or even your full size Chinese elm bonsai, you would want to treat this with a pesticide. Just in terms of pesticides, I would avoid using something like a dilute solution of lime sulfur or a systemic pesticide because I have heard with the Chinese elm specifically, it can cause them to lose all of their leaves and it can stress the tree quite a bit. And now as a bonus part of this video, we're gonna make a little clump style out of the little cuttings that I do have here that rooted from last year. So I'm just going to take these out, lay them down flat, and I'm glad these cuttings do have lots of healthy roots. I'm just taking these out. That's got some good roots on it. This one's got some healthy roots. You can just take the chopstick and also just pry it away. That way you're not pulling the roots and tearing them. All right, and here's another one here. You might as well clump them all together just for the fun of it. This should look pretty cool in the end. So that's all the cuttings gone. So what I'm doing is I'm just grouping these together. Anywhere the roots are lacking on one side, I'm putting that to the inside of the clump. That way the roots flare outward from the center. Some of these branches just aren't working. So I'm gonna prune the branches of these to make it easier to clump together. I'm not really worried about the top parts of these trees at the moment. All I want to do is fuse them at the base. So see when I put this in here, these branches would be in the way here. So. I'll just get rid of them. And then this last one I'm going to put here. So that I think would make a pretty nice tree if they were all fused at the base. From this point, you could cover this in some raffia or aquarium tubing or rubber pipe, anything just to protect the trunks of these trees. We can just tie a simple knot. If you would like to see me go more in depth on how to make a clump style, I will leave a link to that video in the description of this one. But as it is right now, I'm just clumping these together pretty nicely. Now I'm just gonna take a little piece of wire and wrap it around the trunk. So I'm just crossing it over giving it a little twist. And then just to fully tighten it off, I'm taking the gin pliers. That way we can get a lot cleaner twist on there. Whenever I notice this beginning to thicken, I will then come back in and remove the wire. So for this, I have just chosen a normal plastic bonsai training pot. Because this is a clump style and the roots aren't quite established yet, I'm not going to wire this into the pot. I'm going to plant it relatively deep in the pot. That way it's able to remain stable with the amount of soil on top of it. And then later, as this tree establishes, we'll be able to remove the soil and expose the nibari. And then just taking a chopstick, we can work out some of the air gaps. Try and get the tree nice and stable in the pot by working it between the roots. And as you can see here, because this is quite a small tree, I have used a finer particle size of substrate. I just find with small trees like this, if you use a large particle size, they don't really tend to stay stable in the pot, especially without wire. So with the less air gaps in the pot, the tree can stay nice and stable. And with that, all that's left to do now is give this tree a water.
And on that, I'm going to end off this video right here. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like on this video. It really helps out the channel a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And please let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Perhaps you have your own method of rooting Chinese elm from cuttings. I'd love to hear how you guys do it. If you would like to support me and all the things that I do on this channel, hit the thanks button down below. Or if you'd like to become a channel member, hit the join button. That way you'll get early access to new videos before they go out to everyone else. And you'll get access to membership posts if you'd like to keep up to date with all the things that I do off camera, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Notion Bonsai and you can see all the things that I do on there. But on that, thank you so very much for watching. Mm -hmm.